Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. As you know, I have been doing an extensive dive into looking at temperature anomaly data collected by GISS at NASA. What we've been looking at is temperature anomaly data, basically looking at the deviation in temperature relative to the average temperature between about 1951 and 1980. We've looked at this on an annual basis, on a monthly basis, on a latitude and longitude basis. We've been looking across the earth, you know, across all regions within one year. Well, today we're gonna look at that one more way. And so what we're gonna do today is look at latitudinal variation. So if we take each band of latitude and perhaps we'll uh, group it together by uh, similar latitudes and then look at the variation or the temperature anomaly over that period of time to see how it varies at different latitudes. I found a really interesting figure at uh, the Science Visualization Studio at NASA where they created this animation. Um, and again, what you see is the Earth on the left side. And as it spins around, it's segmented into different latitudinal zones. On the right then is what I would call a rug plot. It's not exactly a rug plot, but, but close enough. And you can then see that the the current year has a thicker bar and it's moving left and right with time to indicate the average temperature anomaly for that year in that latitudinal gradient. I think this is a pretty cool figure. Um, I'm not going to try to take on the rotating globe that you see on the left side. Instead, what I wanna do is I wanna make the rug plot itself. And it's not going to be an animation, but what I foresee doing is making a rug plot where, again, we have the latitudinal gradients, and we're going to generate this last version of the figure, um, which, again, I think is pretty cool. Um, and, 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 again, it's called a rug plot because if you look at a rug from the side, you'll see the fibers sticking up on end. And so if you look at this from the side, it's kind of like a rug, right? And so where you have more dense fibers, if you will, for the rug, that is where you have more data that was more similar to each other, right? And so you can see that, you know, for um, the, the Arctic um, latitudes, that it's like been really wide, right? There's been a lot of variation, um, whereas perhaps um, at this um, uh, Southern hemisphere, I think it's called like subtropic or I don't know, subarctic, um, that it's been much more consistent. Anyway, I think this is pretty cool. And this is what I want to generate with you here in our studio today. Reading down through this article, we see that they have a link here for the data. And again, if you hover over this, you'll see that it's a CSV file. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the link or copy the link address rather. I'm coming into our studio. Of course, if you wanna get information on my setup, the directories, the data, the code that I have for this whole series of videos, down below in the description is a link to a blog post that should get you going. We'll go ahead and do library tidyverse so we don't forget. And then I'll also do URL equals the URL to the CSV file that was referenced in um, that blog post. We can then do read uh, CSV. So I can see from the file name that it's a CSV URL. This then will output uh, the typical output from read CSV where we have the year, the global mean, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, and then different um, bands of gradients. What we'll do is come back to this blog post and I'm gonna highlight these different zones that they used in this image. And so I'll paste that into here. Uh, maybe I'll call that bands uh, and then I'll go ahead and make a vector of these values. And so I need to put quotes around everything so that each of these can be used as a different column so that I can use the select function to pull these out of um, to pull these out of uh, the data frame to get the columns that we're interested in using to build our visual. So great, I've almost got them all here. <laughs> so I need to look through the column headings of the data that I've read in and make sure that those match what I have up here in my bands, right? So the first is 90N64 North. And so I see here that I've actually got the opposite, right? So this is 64 North, 90 North. And if I look here, I've got 44 North, 64 North. So those are all flipped. Um, and again, if I look here, I see I've got EQU, so the equator to 24. So these all need to be flipped, unfortunately. So I'll very quickly do that. Um, I might edit the video so that you don't have to watch me do all this because, you know, uh, copying and pasting with Pat's typos is 
got to be up there with just, you know, highlights of watching YouTube. All right, so we've got our bands, and now I'm going to feed this into a select. Uh, I'll do year equals capital year, so that I just keep everything lowercase, and then I'll do all of bands. And so now uh, I don't have any error messages, and I have those eight different latitudinal bands that we want. Excellent. Now I'm going to take those eight columns for the eight bands and use them in a pivot longer so that I have a column for the year, a column for the band, and a column for the size of the anomaly. We can do that with pivot longer. We'll do everything but year, names, two, uh, let's call that zone, and then we'll do values, two, and I'll do t diff. Very good. We now have uh, our three different columns like I was hoping for. I need to go ahead and change zone to be a factor because otherwise when I plot these, say like on the Y axis, it is going to put them in uh, alphabetical order rather than in uh, the order of the latitudes, right? So I'll go ahead and pipe this to a mutate on zone and that's gonna make a factor of a zone and then I'll set the levels uh, to be the, the bands that I have here, right? And so that's the order that I want them in. We now have our factor set up and I will go ahead and save this as zone data, and uh, we can now plot zone data. So we'll go ahead and do zone data, pipe that in a ggplot, um, and then AES, uh, for our x position, I want to put the t diff. We're effectively making a one-dimensional plot, right? So we're plotting t diff for each of the four different bands. We'll then do y equals um, zone, and so let's start with geom point. That's not what we're ultimately gonna use, but let's try geom point. So now we see on the right is effectively a scatter plot where we've got the temperature difference on the X axis and our latitudinal gradients on the Y axis. It's actually the opposite of what I would like to use. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and flip this. And so what I could do is I could take the bands vector and I could put that in a REV function to reverse the order of uh, the data. And so now we have 64 north to 90 north at the top and the equators in the middle and the southern latitudes in the bottom. And this is the orientation I want. And we can already see this kind of looks like what we saw over on the NASA, NASA visualization website. Now what I want to do is take care of this geom point. So instead of geom point, what I actually want to use is geom segment. And so geom segment allows you to draw lines um, or segments of lines on your plot. And it takes four different arguments, x, x end, y, and y end. So x end is going to be the same as t diff, because I want to have, again, those fibers for a rug, which will be uh, vertical fibers, right? And so the x positions for the start and end of those segments will be the same. For the y, we want zone, and y end will be a zone. Um, and so if we do this, we don't get any output. And again, that's because we're basically giving uh, geom segment points rather than segments, right? And so what we need to do is perhaps do something like zone minus 0 0.25 and zone plus 0 0.25. And so what we find then is that because zone is a factor, we can't add and subtract from that, right? And so what I'm gonna do is come up here to my mutate under zone data and I'll do zone uh, position and that's gonna be an as.numeric on zone. And so again, if I look at zone data, I now see I have a position for that. And so for my zone, um, instead of zone for Y, I can do zone position, right? And I can do that down here as well for the end. And let me go ahead and put the Y arguments on the second line for the X. And so here we can see uh, those vertical fibers. Uh, and we basically have a rug plot for each of those different uh, latitudinal positions. I'm gonna go ahead and make the color of those gray. Um, and so we'll do that here in GM segment. I'll do color equals gray. And I'll also do maybe alpha equals 0 0.25. And so we can now see um, our fibers. And again, because we're using that lower um, transparency of alpha of like 0.25, if you have four um, lines on top of each other, then it'll be a solid gray. Maybe I'll go ahead and make this black uh, to make that a little bit more clear. Yeah, I th we might go back to gray, we'll see. But that kind of gives you the idea, again, that where it's darkest, we have the most observations for that latitudinal gradient. Let's go ahead and clean up our axes now. 
So we'll do scale y continuous. We'll do breaks equals one to eight, labels equals bands. So again, now we have our labels on our y axis looking good. Um, across the x axis, we see that we have values going from negative two out to three, but our values maybe should really go out to uh, four. So maybe we'd go negative three to four. Let's give that a shot. So again, we'll do scale x continuous breaks um, equals uh, seek negative three to four by ones and then labels will be the same thing. So we'll do seek minus three to four by ones. So we'll then add the limits uh, from negative three to four. So now we have our axes for the Y and the X. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of uh, the Y axis label. So we'll do labs on X. I'll say temperature anomaly, and then we'll do degree C. So U zero zero B zero C and then y will be uh, null. Very good. Before I do too much more messing with the plot, I'm gonna go ahead and output this with ggsave as a PNG. So we'll do ggsave and we'll do figures and I'll do latitude, latitude anomaly.png. My width, I'll make four. My height, I'll make three units of inches. The next thing I wanna do is keep with the theme of all the figures we've been making, which is basically to make everything um, black in the background. And so all that worrying I did about these lines being black or gray, I need to flip that. So I'll make those lines white. So what we'll do is before I forget about that, I'll go ahead and make the color of the segment white. So I'll go ahead and modify this stuff with the theme function. We'll do plot.background element rect fill equals black and then panel dot background element rect fill equals black and then we need to change the text to be white right and so then we'll do axis dot text element text color equals white and then axis dot title equals element text color equals white now I want to turn our attention to the grid lines. And so the original that I'm trying to model after a little bit, the major grid lines were present um, along the X axis and those were white. Uh, maybe they're gray, I don't know. Um, it didn't have any grid lines that were horizontal. So on the Y axis, I'm kind of thinking though that maybe I would like to use the minor grid lines to give division between the different bands. So let's give that a shot. So what we'll do is panel.grid.major um, X and we'll do element uh, line color equals white. And then we'll do panel.grid.minor.x equals element blank. And then we'll do panel.grid.major.y element blank. And again, to get those grids between uh, the majors, like the one, two, three, four, five, um, so basically on the half, I can use panel dot grid dot minor dot y equals element line uh, color equals white and put that white in quotes and get rid of that extra space so we've flipped the colors and things are looking pretty good um, the more I look at this the more I think there's just way too much going on with all of these lines I think I would like the major grid lines to perhaps be a little bit less prominent also I thought the idea was good to have those minor grid lines along the y-axis but I think it's just it just makes it too busy, right? And so maybe what I'll do instead is just rely on the density of the rugs for each of the bands to make it clear that that relates back to uh, the latitudinal name. The other thing I'm noticing is that if you look really close, you'll see tick marks in there. So let's go ahead and get rid of the tick marks as well. So again, I'll come back up here for this panel grid minor Y, and I'm gonna make this a blank. And then I'll also get rid of those ticks. So we'll do axis.ticks uh, element blank. And with these uh, major grid lines, maybe I'll make it a gray so it's not so prominent. And I'll do a size of 0.25. That'll make it thinner. The default, I think, is 0.5. So that's looking a lot better. I'm really happy with that. Um, one subtle thing that I keep forgetting is that there is a white border around the plot. I don't know why that comes through all the time, but let's go ahead and remove that. And so we'll do color equals black 
uh, to get rid of that line. And so again, that gets rid of that. So now what I wanna do is add some color to the data. If you remember many, many episodes ago, I talked about a book by Cole Nussbaumer Naflick, who has a book called Storytelling with Data. One of the things she suggests doing is taking a plot and making it black and white or making it monochromatic, right? Then you add back in color to highlight what's really important. So I feel like that's what we're gonna do with this visual. I'm going to now add on a line, a thicker line, uh, maybe make it look like a bit of a pill um, for each of the latitudes to show the anomaly for the year 2021. So to do that, we'll come back up to our code and I'm gonna take zone data and I'm gonna filter that uh, for the current year. Filter year equals equals 2021. Again, we get the latitudes for this year. I'm gonna call this current year. Great, and now I can add another geome segment. So I'll do geome segment data equals current year, AES, and then our X and Y, um, X and Y end positions are gonna be the same, but our color will be set by the T diff, right? So we'll go ahead and add that. So now we can see the blue lines in there. Um, of course, I wanna go back to my color scheme um, and we can also get rid of that legend. So to do that, we'll come back up here and with our scales, we'll do scale color uh, gradient two. So we'll flip the defaults by doing low equals dark blue, uh, mid equals white, uh, high equals dark red, and then our midpoint uh, will be zero. And I want to uh, get rid of the guides. So we'll do guide equals none. And so now we can kind of see uh, the bands in there. So what I'd like to do is make them bigger. So we can do that with size um, argument to uh, geom segment. And so we'll do, let's do size equals, let's try three. Okay, maybe that's a little too big. Uh, let's do size equals two um, right there. So what I'd like to do is maybe give it a little bit more polish and make those ends rounded. To do that, we can come back up here to geom segment. And we've seen this before, um, before when we made that kind of tornado looking figure of the temperature anomalies, if you recall that from a few episodes ago, we can do line end equals round. I really like the appearance of this rounded end to those colored segments. Um, and I think that looks really nice. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and put a title on this figure so it's clear uh, to our audience what they are looking at. So we'll come back up to labs. And for my title, I'll say variation in uh, annual temperature anomaly by latitude 1880 to 2021. And again, um, with the flipping of the colors, the title is there, but it's black. <laughs> so we'll come back up here and I'll add to this, we'll do plot.title element text color equals white, and I'll make that bolded. So we'll do face equals bold. So that's running off the right side of the screen. Also, as we've seen before, the title starts on the Y axis. I'd rather it start on the plot. And so again, we can come back up to where we had plot title and we'll do plot.title.position equals plot. Good, but it's still running off the screen after the word by. And so after the word by, I can put in a line break there. Wonderful. I think I'll go ahead and put in a subtitle to indicate that the bars that are colored are for the year 2021. And so coming back up to labs, I will add uh, a subtitle and say bars for 2021 are colored by the size of the anomaly. And then we need to come back down to plot title and we need to do plot subtitle to make that white um, and then the face will be bold. Actually, I'm gonna make this gray so it's a little bit more subdued. It's actually maybe a little bit bigger than I want it to be. So let's come back up to the plot subtitle option and I'm gonna do size equals uh, six and maybe that's too small. <laughs> let's go up to eight and I think that'll be pretty good. Great, I think that looks really nice. So again, uh, this is the rug plot that I had in mind. We don't have the spinning globe off to the side here. I'll leave that for you to figure out how to do. If you figure it out, let me know. I'd love to see that in action. Anyway, again, I like the appearance of the rug plot uh, at the different latitudinal gradients. Again, where we can see it is whiter. Um, that's where we have more data because those 
uh, fibers, if you will, are close to each other or they're on top of each other. And uh, because we use that alpha of 0.25, when you have a white spot, that means there's at least four lines or four years worth of data um, at the same position. Also, um, I like this effect of coloring the current year's worth of data. I think you could also see how you could use the GG animate tools that we've seen in previous episodes to animate this to give kind of the horse race appearance that you saw in the visualization that we saw on the NASA website. I'll leave that for you, and I think you can definitely figure out how to do that without too much effort. On the whole, I really like this. One thing that I'm not such a fan of are these labels over here um, for the y-axis, but I don't really know what to do differently other than having a spinning globe over here as my y-axis, and that's just kind of showing off, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I would be really interested to hear what you think would be effective for a rug plot type of visualization like this. If you're from the field of ecology, microbial ecology like me, I'll often see rug plots used um, on the X and Y axis. I think it's called geome rug actually to, to generate that. And that is useful for when you have like an ordination where you have a lot of points on top of each other and it's kind of hard to see where the density of points are. And so on the X and Y axis then they draw these rugs uh, so that you can see where the density of points is along the two axes. Anyway. Give that a shot. Let me know what you turn up with. Um, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.